Hey guys, this is Justin back with an engineer's perspective. And I wanted to do a discussion on where I'm currently at with how I think about um, finishing off an edge in terms of stropping, basically the stropping progression um, and deburring. I, so a few weeks ago, I did actually purchase this, it's a book, but I mean, what is it, 30 pages or so? I don't know. I don't know how long it is, not too long, from uh, the knife grinders guy down in Australia called Knife Deburring. It was like 750 US. Read, read through it. I've molded over some and I'm still testing some of the ideas. And I'm not gonna, this isn't a book review, but I do plan on doing kind of a book review on this. But I've been mulling over the ideas in here. And then also, um, things, you know, that I've, my own experiences in the past and uh, experiments that I've done. And then, you know, things from like Michael Christie and uh, Sean Houston from Triple B. Um, Scott Gunn and you know all those guys so this is kind of a combination of those things and where I'm currently at now and yeah I guess I just kind of wanted to talk about that so where where am I at now how do I think about edge finishing and really deburring so one thing well let's start here let's just kind of go through a progression so I'm just gonna use these for demonstration purposes. So you go through your normal progression with the knife. Got the 10V PM2 here. So, you know, your coarse grit 240F. Then you go up to your 400F, 800F, 1200F. So you finish on the 1200F stone, which is a two to three micron stone. That's about a three to 4K finish uh, in terms of GIS. Japanese industrial standard. Um, so where where do I believe I'm at after I finish on that kind of a stone? So according to this, this book, it quantifies it, but it's also been documented by Science of Sharp, another resource. But when you're sharpening on an abrasive, the push stroke ver or edge trailing versus edge leading it gives you different results. And what that is, is that in an edge leading stroke, even though these are very small particles, is they're impacting straight into the edge and they do actually cause very small microchips. And then that's proportional to the size of the, of the abrasive. So, the edge leading stroke on a 240, the microchips are gonna be larger than they would be on this 1200. And the quantification of that, this is, so this is a rough number, you know, I, this is, you know, one source, so grain of salt here, but what they report is that on an edge trailing stroke, you will see a 10 times smaller um, edge apex. So let's say that you've got a two micron stone here, two micron, is that on an edge trailing stroke, you will get 10 times less than that in your apex width, which would be a 0.2 micron apex, right? So you follow, I'll, I'll do the math, I'll write it out and you can look at it. So you get a 0.2 micron with the edge trailing, but when you go back to the edge lead, the microchips cause your apex width to bump up 50% of that. So instead of getting a you know, 10 times reduction, you get a five times reduction. So when I push on an edge trail, I'm getting a 0.2 micron apex, and when I pull it back, I'm getting a 0.3 micron apex because it's a 50% increase. So half of two is one, add one to two is three, point three micron. So that's how I'm thinking in terms of my apex width when I'm doing that. So I'm thinking that when I finish off of this, you know, two to three micron stone, I've got a roughly point two to point three micron edge on a strop, all right? 
but in terms of burr, there's, you know, discussion between edge trailing and edge leading strokes on burr formation and what you get. And I am in the camp that at this moment that I'm still in favor of edge trailing uh, strokes on a stone uh, and still doing some burr minimization that way. But here's the deal is edge trailing or edge leading either way, you're going to have some form of a burr. In my opinion, the best way to finish the edge on the stone is the combination of the two, because either way you're forming a burr, but the light edge leading strokes will kind of chip off that, um, that large burr. So it, and it won't draw a burr out because when you try to draw a burr out, when you come and slam into it, it's just gonna break that thing right off. So to me, I want the refinement of the, of the stropping stroke with the edge cleanliness of the lead stroke. So that's why I like to finish on the light passes that are just as light as I can. Strop, lead, strop. Strop, lead, strop. Strop, lead, strop. And that way I feel I get the best combination of not overly micro chipped edge, but I know I haven't stropped and stropped and stropped and drawn out a burr on the stone. Cause I don't want to deal with a foil burr off of the stone. Okay. So in my mind, the edge that I'm coming off of here is between, you know, the 10, 10 to five times reduction in the stone grit. And in my mind, it needs, you know, it's got some of those microchips in it a little bit and it just needs to be refined. It's pretty beat up off of the stone and it needs to be cleaned up and that apex width needs to come in down. So then that's where we go to the strop. So currently, I didn't even bring the strops out here. That's amazing. I'll hold this. So currently, off of this stone, I want to go to a higher grit strop, even if it's a side step or even a back step, because like I said, I want to reduce my apex width with something that's not running abrasive straight into the edge, and I want to clean it up. So when you're doing the strops, there's some different actions that are going on. You no longer have this super hard substrate of a stone. Now you've got something with some give. So I like wood. It's not as much give as leather, but it's a lot more than like a stone. So you've got something with give, number one. Number two is the abrasive is no longer fixed into the stone where it's just like a point sticking up that you just scrape by. Now when the edge comes and hits it, you get rolling abrasion. And rolling abrasion is A, more efficient in terms of cutting, B, more efficient in terms of uh, an even edge finish, and uh, C, it's that, you know, edge trailing that's not smacking into it, so better refinement. And D, the last one, is, um, and this is from Scott Gunn, his theory on it is that you do have some, you know, the micro serrations in the edge is with that edge uh, trailing, rolling action of free abrasive is you get some polishing in between those teeth and refines the teeth down. So you get all those benefits of ending on a higher, of using this higher grit strop and going to a strop uh, from the stone. So I like to go to the higher grit strop so I can do some real apex reduction. So few passes on that, alternating, because I don't want to build up a foil burr on one side and build it up on the other side. I want to try to minimize it, so I'm trading it. So reducing that apex down, I don't want to overdo it, and then they come together and start really forming a foil burr. So I'm trying to be conscious of how the edge feels. I'm not super good at it yet, but you know, less than 10 per side is generally where I'm at if you do proper cleanup on the stone. So reduce that apex width. All right, so now that we've got the apex down a little bit, I want to sneak up on it a little bit more yet. I'm still looking for some more refinement. Um, 
So I'm gonna take one more, another step down to the one micron strop. And here's another part of this theory that I wanna bring in now to this discussion, is there's talk of when you use a knife that you fatigue the steel at the edge. And when you sharpen it, you wanna remove that fatigued steel that's been bent back and forth and smushed and everything. Well, when an abrasive particle cuts through the steel, is basically what's happening is it's so hard and sharp that it grabs onto the steel and it's pulling it and it rips it physically off. So if you've ever seen like a, um, like a, a test of a metal rod where they're testing the ultimate strength of it, the yield strength, and they'll pull it until the middle necks down because it's sucking it in as it stretches apart and it's, you know, it's stretching and stressing out the steel. That's what's happening when an abrasive particle runs into the steel is that that sharp edge is grabbing on and ripping it off. So in that, you know, interface between where it grabbed and where it stayed, the rip in between is fatigue steel. So my the theory for me is the smaller the abrasive I have, I'm leaving a smaller zone of fatigue steel that's left on the still connected to the knife side. I hope that made sense. So that's why I wanna go down to the one micron, um, cause I'm trying to reduce the fatigued edge zone from four micron abrasive, which would be, oh, I don't wanna get so complicated here, but you know, one tenth of that, remember the divide by 10 rule. So I'm going from the four micron down to the one micron. Um, zone of fatigued steel and as I mentioned before you know that divide by 10 rule so now my apex width after one micron is divided by 10 it is 0.1 microns in width my apex so now we're at a tenth of a micron apex width we've really reduced that fatigue steel zone but we still probably have a little bit of burr that's been drawn out and now or maybe not even drawn out. Maybe you've removed that steel, but there's kind of the a theory of like the burr and then the burr root. So you can take off the you know flaky part of the burr, but there's still like a wire that's right there at the root of it. And you getting that root off is important. So to fully de-root that one, that's where I've been using the submicron abrasives. So came off the stones, went to the, you know, three or four micron down to one micron. Now we're talking half micron or quarter micron. And uh, I've been matching the angle up to this point. I think it's going to depend on steel and heat treat at the end of the day. But so far, I've been mostly sharpening crew wear and LC200N lately. But so, so far, I've been raising the angle by between half a degree and two degrees. I'm not... 100% sure, I'd say a, a degree. And uh, so that, that quarter micron or half micron in my case is hitting the root of that burr and really getting after it aggressive like. And then I'm just doing maybe one or two strops per side to de-root that burr. So that all that's left is a clean, clean apex. And with such a small particle, half micron, divide that by 10, so 0 0.05 micron apex width, um, as you've really minimized the zone of fatigued steel that's left over from the ripping action of abrading, abrading steel. Um, yeah, and then after that fact, you know, not trying to do too many passes on that submicron abra abrasive, because I don't want to generate um, a foil burr or anything either. So just, you know, one, two maybe, feel it and I've gotten pretty in tune with the feeling of what I'm looking for maybe one two more and feel it usually doesn't take more than one to two passes per side and I get what is an edge that has definite bite you can't move it across your fingertips without it digging in but you can slide it across your fingertips without generating blood but it will dig in if it moves but it's also very very refined very, very refined. Um, and that's kind of my theory of it. So there's kind of the apex reduction 
with the, the bigger, you know, three to four micron strop. Then there's the um, zone of, um, what would you call it? Oh, zone of fatigued steel reduction with the one micron, and then the derooting with the sub-micron stropping. So that's kind of my three strop progression. And I would, I would do it regardless of the stone I finished on. You know, I used the 1200F, which is the two to three micron um, abrasive example. But the thing with that three to four micron um, strop is I think that's probably going to be big enough where you can do enough work to reduce your apex appropriately, regardless of the, the abrasive you finish on. I can't confirm that, but that's my guess. Um, and yeah, so that's my, my theory. How I've been testing that theory is uh, a couple things. So according to this book only, is the only resource I have on it, with the best tester is uh, their opinion, the only real way to determine if there is a burr there or not. Um, using this in conjunction with the Carter three finger test of sharpness, so this, I have definitely de think I've developed a feeling for what that actual, that type of de-burred, de-rooted edge feels like. There could be others that would feel different, but of the one I'm working with in particular at this moment. And uh, basically, if your score, according to the book, is over 150 on, and this is steel dependent, over 150, you've got a burr. You've got some sort of burr on it because when it contacts the filament, it rolls over. So straight up. Between 150 and 100, it's a little bit of a gray area depending on the steel. Um, but, you know, once you start getting down to like the 120 below that, there's a good chance you've got a pretty burr-free edge depending on the steel. But the only real guarantee of a burr free edge is sub 100. That's basically the goal with this is for a sub 100 score indicating that you've got a burr free edge. So if you've watched my old videos, there's a lot of edges, especially on the CTS BD1N, where I was getting above or like a 160. And with this experimentation I've been doing, my opinions on CTS BD1N have been changing a little bit, or at least the heat treat on the one I've got in terms of the difficulty deburring it. Um, it seems like that steel takes a foil burr pretty easy despite its hardness. Will take, you know, a hard to detect burr pretty easily, and then it's hard to get rid of it. But anyway, so that's how I've been testing it is with my fingers, this sharpness tester, and then just using it and seeing how the edge degrades. You know, if there's an immediate loss of that high-end sharpness, especially if you like, you know, run, run it through wood and that sharpness immediately goes away on your fingers in the best tester, then that can kind of tell the story. But this isn't something I've, you know, followed all the way to the end, but it's where I'm at right now. And I'm seeing some relatively promising results. I don't, you know, I don't know if what I've got is perfect, perfect, but you know, I'm kind of liking the direction it's going. So there's a lot of experimentation on the different steels yet. So like harder, more brittle steels, you know, work a burr a little bit different. So like I would expect this pretty hard 10 V to react different than this M4. And I mean, these will both actually hold on to somewhat temperamental burr, but M4 way more than 10 V. And the actual deburring process, as I've discussed it, I don't know. And then something like LC200N, which is significantly more malleable and tough than either of these, um, is going to be different yet again. And uh, according to that book, the more malleable the steel, the more necessary that you know high grit derooting pass is. Whereas these harder, more um, brittle steels. Uh, don't necessarily need that. So anyways, that's a pretty long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope it made sense. I didn't write anything down to kind of show, but yeah, we'll see. That's all I've got though. Thanks for watching.
拜。